Ticket to the World, written by Paul Carganilla. Fade in. Exterior, Los Angeles, skyline, morning. It's morning in downtown Los Angeles, but you can't see the colors of the sunrise due to the daily morning smog. Exterior, Los Angeles, Medical Plaza, parking lot, morning. The Medical Center's employee parking lot is full of luxury vehicles, BMWs, Audis, Teslas, etc. And literally all of them are black, white, gray, or silver, adding to the monochrome dreariness of the morning. Until a bright pink 2001 Jeep Wrangler pulls into the lot, comes to rest in a parking spot. The Jeep's vibrant personality shines like a beacon of hope among the shades of gray. Exterior parking lot continuous. The driver's side door of the pink Jeep opens. Out steps Grace Dawson, juggling her morning coffee, crossbody bag, and cell phone. Grace, 38, is naturally attractive, but she's tired. It looks like maybe she tried to curl her hair like many Hallmark movie starlets do, but she still hasn't invested the time to learn how to use her newish Dyson air wrap, which she's still experiencing buyer's remorse for. Grace shuts the Jeep door, but it doesn't close all the way. As she pushes it closed with her hip, she spills coffee on her down Patagonia jacket. She grumbles, begins to walk to the office, simultaneously texting and sipping coffee. Her pace indicates she's probably late for work again. She enters one of the smaller buildings in the medical plaza. Above the door, a sign reads, Children's Wellness. Interior, pediatrician's office, later. Grace, now in her doctor's coat, uses her otoscope to check the ears of her young patient, Joy, seven. Anything in there, Dr. Grace? Mm, just alpacas and sloths. Grace no winks at Joy's mother, who smiles nervously. No monkeys or kittens? <laughs> oh, no, of course not. Monkeys and kittens were last year. Alpacas and sloths, completely normal for a big seven-year-old lady. Lady, I'm a girl. Oh, sorry. Joy, there's nothing wrong with being a lady. Ladies are grown-ups. Grown-ups are boring. Honey, stop. That's not nice. Grown-ups don't play or believe in magic or fairy tales or like cookies. I want to be a kid forever. Grace kneels down, bringing herself eye level with the child. Sweetie, I'm a grown-up and you'd better believe I like cookies. I like cookies, too. Obviously. <laughs> Even grown-ups can be kids at heart. I believe in magic and fairy tales. Just because we grow up does not mean that life loses its magic. With faith in Grace's words, Joy smiles. Grace wonders if she believes them herself. But where will we hide the alpacas? Interior, pediatrician's office, reception room, End of shift. Grace wraps up at the end of the day, shutting down computers, changing coats, etc. Her phone rings, reads, Krista. She answers on speaker. Krista! Hey, girl, are you done? Are you a free woman? Yes, just packing up. Interior, Krista's SUV. Grace's high school BFF, Krista, 38, drives her Tesla Model X down streets of Boise, Idaho. Her husband, Matt, 35, rides in the passenger seat. Krista's car, her herringbone peacoat, and the huge diamond on her finger are evidence she's well off financially. But her Mr. and Mr. Claus earrings suggest she doesn't take herself too seriously. Matt, who wears nothing but wrinkle-free designer suits, drums away on a small laptop. It's rare to see his eyes because he's always working, but he's the most relaxed, stress-free, always working guy you'll ever meet. I am so proud of you for actually allowing yourself to take a vacation this year. We're proud of you, Grace. Matt's here too. Hi, Matt. Oh, hey, girl. Yeah, yes, finally, right? The last few years have been crazy. You? More like six. More like ten. Maybe eight. What are we talking about? Your busy life. Oh, yes, I'm taking the whole two weeks. Off till next year. Good for you. Exterior Los Angeles Medical Plaza, dusk. 
Grace exits the building, continues to the parking lot while the conversation continues. Great. And part two, and this is probably the more important part of the equation, you're still coming home, right? Grace winces. No, I don't know. Probably not. What? <laughs> no way! No, you are coming. You're... Ex exterior parking lot continuous. Grace continues her walk to the car. Your high school wants to honor you two decades after you've graduated, and you're probably not going? I mean, it sounded great at first, but now I, I Grace, don't know. Grace, this is unacceptable. No returning Winter Ball Queen has ever been a no-show. And also, are you really going to stand up David Hockley? Ooh, I can <laughs> smell him smoldering from here. Okay, I'm just trying to take steps forward, you know? And this doesn't feel like it's... Girl, you have the rest of your life. After this weekend, this weekend to keep working on you. But I'm sorry, you're coming home. Even if I have to fly down there and drag you, kicking and screaming. I miss you. Grace considers, unlocks her car. Exterior, Grace's historic West Hollywood condominium, night. Grace's pink 2001 Jeep Wrangler returns home, comes to rest in her designated parking spot. Interior, Grace's condo, kitchen. As Grace selects a bottle from her mostly empty wine rack, her phone rings. Her phone rings, reads, Mommy. She answers on speaker. Hi. Interior, Boise, Dawson family home, living room, continuous. Anna Dawson, 58, is a classically beautiful, well-put-together matriarch wearing the coziest Christmas sweater south of the North Pole. She paces in front of a Christmas tree that would make Buddy the Elf jealous. Where did your Aunt Rose get the daffy idea that you may not be coming home for Christmas? Aunt Rose, 60, dressed in mostly black and looking like a cinematic stowaway from Hocus Pocus, quickly enters the room. <laughs> Betray me, you crone. Intercut phone conversation, West Hollywood, Boise. Mom, she probably just saw the poll on my story. Grace, honey, this was going to be your first Christmas back home since... I, no, Mom, I'm sorry, I just... <sighs> she takes a big swig of wine. Anna and Grace hang on the silence. I think maybe I'm having a midlife crisis. You're only 38. Oh, she's a millennial. She's overdue. I'm sure you're not. It's just stress. You've been working nonstop for eight years. Do you have any idea what that does to your body and your mi mind? Have, have you been taking your vitamins? I just don't know if I've ever felt so um, lost in my life. I, I feel like maybe I just need to be home in silence. Home alone. Well, even more reason for you to be home with your family who loves you and knows you. And what about the winter ball? Oh, don't miss uh, that. About oh. that. Aunt Rose snatches the phone. GJ, you gotta come home and help me out here. Your mom's going crazy over here. Today I caught her talking on the phone to a stranger. Drop it, Rose, I was <laughs> excited. She thought she won a free cruise. Well, he sounded dependable and knowledgeable. And clearly not from Boise. Well, Goddess knows how personal info she gave him before I shut it down. <clears throat> I've been on the phone all day canceling her cards and changing passwords. Anna takes the phone back. The tone gets serious. I've brought Christmas to you ever since your dad passed. And even if it was just for a day or even for a few hours, remember the IHOP Christmas? Yeah. Gracie, come home for Christmas, please. <sighs> oh, honey. Interior, Grace's condo, bedroom, later. Grace sits on the floor of her bedroom, fishing through shoeboxes of old photographs. At last, she finds the professionally posed photo she was looking for. A printed caption at the bottom reads, 2001 Winter Ball Royalty, Grace Dawson and David Hockley. There's young and vibrant Grace, smiling ear to ear in her newly minted golden crown. Posing awkwardly beside her, the Winter Ball King, 
David Hockley. Young David is strikingly handsome. His image beams through the photo with unwavering confidence and charm, reminiscent of Tom Cruise in Risky Business. Grace gazes at the photo, mourning the good times. She hops on her computer, looks up David's Facebook profile again. She clicks through the photos. There he is, shirtless, petting tigers, playing guitar, delivering baby sloths, throwing axes. Each photo oozes with intrigue, danger, sex, and adventure. Who would ever stand up this guy on a date? Beautiful piano music swells. Interior, Grace's condo, living room. Grace sits at her piano, playing and singing a beautifully haunting rendition of Silent Night. Camera rotates around her to reveal a tear in her eye. She abruptly stops herself, wipes her eye, sighs deeply. Deep. Her fingers launch into a new selection. can't bring herself to finish the phrase. Interior, Grace's condo, living room. Later, Grace's TV plays a classic episode of Grey's Anatomy. Christina is saying goodbye to Meredith. Don't be a hero. You're my person. I need you alive. You make me brave. Camera reveals Grace, finally in her pajamas, spread across her couch annihilating a pint of Ben and Jerry's Chunky Monkey. Through more tears, Grace says the next line along with Christina, perfectly synchronized. Okay, okay. now we need to now dance, it, dance out. it out. <laughs> Meredith and Christina begin to dance and Grace is just a freaking mess. Her phone begins to ring, an unfamiliar ringtone that sounds almost like an alarm. She looks at it, confused. It's a voice call through Facebook Messenger. The shirtless, chiseled man in the profile picture is unmistakable, and name below it only confirms it's David oh Hockley. Oh, God. Oh, God. Um, uh, David? <laughs> David? The ringing feels like it's growing louder and faster as she frantically fumbles to pause her show, wipe her <laughs> eyes, and collect herself. She answers, attempts to sound as nonchalant as possible. Hello? Hot damn, it worked! Hi! Grace? Um, may I ask who's calling? It's, it's, it's David! Hockley! I, <laughs> Boise, hi! Oh, David, yeah, oh, well, golly, this, this is, what a surprise! She drops the phone to her chest, embarrassed. Golly, what the, <sighs> Exterior, Boise, Idaho. David's backyard. Continuous. Just like his Facebook profile photo, David is currently shirtless. It's obvious from the nearby axe and the many planks he is piling up that he has just finished chopping enough firewood to last the rest of the winter. The air is so cold that his sweaty, chiseled body is actually steaming. Today, David is actually more handsome, charming, and confident than was evident in the photo from 20 years ago. But now, instead of risky business Tom Cruise, he looks more like Mission Impossible Tom Cruise. I never tried a voice call through Facebook. Uh, I, I didn't have your number, so I thought I'd give it a whirl. <laughs> Sweet baby Jesus, it's been 20 years. How the hell are you, beautiful? Intercut phone conversation, West Hollywood, Boise. Grace looks down at her wine, ice cream, and pajamas, and it's almost like she forgot how to talk. I, I've never been better more. I'm re, uh, real good, real good. Good, good, great. I, hey, I, I know it's late. I'm sure you're busy. It's the holidays. You're a doctor now, right? It's um, in Tinseltown? I, I thought I saw on Facebook. Yep, there. yeah, I, I'm that... Indeed, correct. You're okay? Yes. Wonderful. I, well, I was saying, I, uh... 
I value your time, so I won't waste it this evening. I was hoping maybe we could get together and reconnect this week. Um, yeah, yes, I, I like that, that this week. Uh, you are coming back for winter ball, right? Winter ball, um, that's Sunday night? I, I might, I might try. <laughs> I sure hope so. I mean, I'm really excited about it. King David makes his long-awaited triumphant return to his kingdom. I need my queen by my side, right? David smiles, a million-dollar smile. Grace <laughs> looks like a deer in headlights. Cut to interior Grace's condo montage. Quick series of rapid camera shots. Grace opens her laptop, travel website, buy ticket, mouse click, laughing at herself, suitcase open, trying on dresses, cursing at herself, suitcase being filled, zippers zipping. Grace hits the bed, surprisingly excited, and exhausted. She sighs, yells at the ceiling. What am I doing? Black. Oh Exterior, Los Angeles International Airport, runway, dawn. A commercial passenger airplane departs. Exterior, Boise Airport, landing strip, two hours later. The same plane lands. Exterior, Boise Airport. Grace rolls her ginormous suitcase out of the baggage claim doors. She's wearing a pea coat, cozy scarf, and her hair is perfectly curled. The air is crisp and clean, something she'd forgotten. The pristine beauty of the snow-capped mountains in nearby Boise National Forest takes her breath away. What remains of her breath dances, curls, spins, and twirls in the frigid morning air. Aunt Rose's olive green 1969 Volkswagen van pulls up. We can hear Rose and Anna squealing from inside. The passenger side opens and Anna hops out, practically tackles Grace. <laughs> My baby's home! My mommy. <laughs> kisses, hugs, and more kisses. Aunt Rose has made her way around from the driver's seat and joins the hug fest. Impatient vehicles honk. They break it up. Aunt Rose shakes a fist at the honking cars. Anoint thee! Anoint thee! Go away, rump-fed reunion sluts! <laughs> Interior, Aunt Rose's van. Rose drives, Anna in passenger seat, Grace on the van bench behind them. Honey, I know when you used to, when you used to hate when I would plan out your visit, so you will be happy to hear that I have not planned a thing. I just want you to relax. Oh, Zero stress. Thank you. Well, that's not entirely true. We're planning an epic Christmas morning buffet. Sweet potato pancakes. Corned beef, uh, hash browns, uh, my famous O'Brien skillet. My award-winning bacon tartar top bake. And, and potato frittata. And I can't wait till you try this new Southwest hash recipe of mine with adobe lime cream. Yeah, and my spinach quiche with potato crust. <laughs> and chocolate hash brown waffles. <laughs> <laughs> okay, how many people have you invited? Anna and Rose look to each other, confused. No one. Oh, that feels right. She nods her head, already mentally prepping for the Christmas morning car blowed as she gazes out the window at her hometown. The cold, bare branches of Boise's ash and birch trees seem to wrap her in a warm bear hug like the welcoming arms of her happy childhood. Exterior, Boise, Dawson home. Aunt Rose's van pulls into the driveway of the Dawson family home, a modest single-level mid-century classic located on a quiet cul-de-sac on the south end of the Boise Highlands. The house is, in fact, decked out with Christmas, complete with exterior illumination. The Dawson gals exit the van. Grace admires the decor. Aunt Rose struggles to take Grace's epic suitcase out of the vehicle into the house. Did all this? Well, I wanted it to feel like home. I didn't need this, but it's amazing. I love it. Anna puts her arm around her little girl. They take their time gazing at the house. No one's in a hurry to do anything. Except for Aunt Rose. We can hear her off camera struggling to get Grace's <laughs> luggage through the front Wait. door. 
Oh, patience be a tired mare, yet she will plod. Interior, Dawson's home, Grace's bedroom. Aunt Rose wrestles Grace's suitcase into her old bedroom, which is basically the same as she left it when she went off to med school in the fall of 2002. Avril Lavigne, Dawson's Creek, and NSYNC posters dominate the walls. However, while it's been many years since her last visit, there is also plenty of evidence that she has spent a lot of time back home after high school. Her desk and bookcase are stacked with medical journals and Grey's Anatomy DVD box sets. Rose rolls the suitcase against the wall as Grace and Anna finally enter. Grace takes in the room. Memories flood back. Okay, so I almost tore out these dusty posters, but... She points to Avril Lavigne. This young woman is sexy as hell. And points to NSYNC. And these little girls are adorable. Points to Dawson's Creek. (laughs) This affects me like an unexplainably beautiful car accident with many gruesome fatalities. I, I, I can't kind of stop looking at it, ever. Look at these four children, so... Tragic. Every smile like a Mona Lisa. Those children gave me hope growing up. (laughs) In what? I don't know. Love. Art is so much perspective. You see love. I see lost souls. Purely naive and yet being led like lambs to the slaughter. Rose? I retire. Rose slips out the door like a shadow. Anna and Grace are alone. I wouldn't let her change a thing. Ava dusted and cleaned everything. New sheets, pillows, duvets are fluffed. Anna takes another look at Grace, finally home. She can't help herself. Pulls Grace into a tight mother-daughter hug. Doesn't hold back the tears. Okay, I can't hear Grace, so I'm just going to move forward. I'm just, my heart is full. Mine too. Thank you for begging. I'm sorry, I just... No, I, I really I didn't want to come, but I'm glad I did. You know, it's, it's like going to the gym, emotionally. They sit on the bed. Anna puts her arm around Grace, who snuggles her head onto her mother's shoulder. When your father passed... Can we just... Silence. They haven't shared family time together at home in this way. There's a new, old, unaddressed, empty space. I'm sorry, I guess I'm, I'm not. It's, it's okay. They work through it a moment longer. Well, what's on your dance card? Hmm? I didn't make any plans for you, but knowing you, I'm sure you're... Oh, no, no, Mom, I have no plans. I'm I'm just, I'm here. I'm glad. Me too. Grace pops her head off her mom's shoulder as she remembers. I do have to go to the high school after school to pick my cape and crown. You're going to the ball? Grace reluctantly nods. Anna is quite relieved. Oh, honey, it'll be wonderful. And I'm so happy that you won't miss it. Me Anna hugs too. her daughter once more. Me too. Yay. <laughs> Exterior, Boise High School, main building, later. Establishing shot of historic Boise High School. The bell rings. Students spill out and away. Grace climbs the iconic front steps. Interior, Boise High School Administration Office. The receptionist looks on as Grace signs the guest binder at the front desk. The receptionist smiles. Thank you. Um, Mr. DeWitt's office is still upstairs? Yes, but I think he's probably in the gym. They are setting up the stage for Sunday. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Exterior, Boise High School, quad. As Grace crosses the quad area, which is now paved over in concrete, She looks around, finding memories everywhere. The entrance of her freshman locker hall, the homeroom window she gazed out of every morning of her sophomore year, the steps where the principal's son kissed her cheek junior year. 
the benches by the library, where she spent every lunch period senior year, trading the day's gossip with only the most popular kids. As she scans, she recognizes the face of a man with salt-and-pepper hair, wearing a perfectly pressed three-piece suit crossing her path. Mr. Conse? Jim Conse, 60, stops, sees Grace. A wave of recognition crosses his face. Grace Dawson! Grace is ecstatic, giddy. Oh my gosh, can I hug you? Uh, uh, only if you promise to call me Jim. Okay, I promise. Then I can't say hey, no. no. <laughs> she squeals with joy and hugs the man. What an absolute pleasure, my dear. Oh, I can't believe it. They step back, examine each other. You've certainly grown into a handsome young woman. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, no wonder. It's in your genes. Thank you. You have not aged. <laughs> How are you? How have you been? I'm just fine, just fine, still imparting the means of melody upon the minds of tomorrow. Oh, that's great. I hope they know how lucky they are. You still play? Yes. Oh, yeah, mostly for myself, but um, sometimes, you know, YouTube, no formal concerts or anything. Every new semester, I show my piano class the tape of your performance of Somewhere Over the Rainbow. Oh. <sighs> The touch and, and grace on the keys of a meadowlark and the voice of an angel. Oh, maybe I'll re-record it digitally for you. You can keep it in the cloud. That sounds very complicated. It's not. <laughs> you're in town for the ball? Yes. Your mother must be so happy that you're visiting. Very, yes. I see her. Tuesdays and, and, and Sundays. I'm, I'm directing the church choir now. I heard about that. That's so neat. It's, it's really saved me in a way. After, uh, after Gert passed, I... Oh, I'm so sorry. I was so sad when I heard that. Thank you. I left me searching for uh, things to get me out of the house. Our house. That choir has been a gift. You should come by the house and visit sometimes. Mom has always spoken very highly of you, as long as I can remember. Well, uh, that's, that's nice. After the conversation's first lull, be it ever so slight. I was looking for Principal DeWitt. Ah, yes. Um, he, he's in the gym uh, getting ready for the... Uh, I was just in there, uh, help stage the marching band. They're going all out for your return. Interior, Boise High School, Gymnasium. Grace enters the dark gym. Marching band students line the walls, illuminated by brand new looking stage lights, which hang from a trestle on the ceiling. There's a spotlight fixed on the drum major, 17, on a stage in the center of the room, arms raised as if to begin conducting at any moment. On stage next to the drum major, dimly lit by spillover spotlight, is a middle-aged man with a microphone. Grace is too far away to clearly see his face, but he's wearing a suit with no tie. And with pants that short, he should at least be wearing socks. Down, down, Emma, into the to, tiny bit to the left, and I think we're good. A staff member on a cherry picker adjusts stage lights. They illuminate the remaining band members in the corner by a new state-of-the-art tech booth. Yes, perfect, thank you. Okay, Sam, take it back to one. A student seated at the control panel in the booth presses a button. All lights go down, except the spotlight on the drum major, who counts the band in. The band plays the iconic intro to 2001, A Space Odyssey. Specialized lighting cues illuminate the room with each crescendo, each big chord. Grace watches in awe. It's actually all quite impressive for a high school production. As the cinematic masterpiece of music approaches the big climactic ending, a new light illuminates the man. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming, giving a big warm welcome to Boise High School. Grace's mouth drops open. She recognizes the man as Nick, one of her classmates and best high school friends. 
His clearly rehearsed introduction is perfectly timed with the swelling music. To the 2001 Winter Ball King and Queen. The music reaches the big finale. David Hockley and Grace Dawson. After the final note of the epic piece, the marching band launches immediately into a brassy field show arrangement of another 2001 classic, Destiny's Child's Bootylicious. Nick celebrates a perfect rehearsal. He yells over the music toward the drum major, still conducting the band. Yes! Yes! Nailed it! That was it! That's the one! He does a celebratory dance to the music. In her dark corner, Grace chuckles. On stage, Nick gets a little carried away with his celebration dance, does a booty drop, and starts twerking poorly to the music. Embarrassed? No, not at all. He owns it. He loves it. And the students do, too. Several band members have to stop. They can't play through the laughter. Grace is also full out laughing. Hard. Interior Boise High School Gymnasium, minutes later. A little later, the bright fluorescent lights of the gym are on. Students pack up their instruments. Faculty locks up equipment. Grace shyly approaches the stage, where Nick wraps up his conversation with the drum major. Yeah, I think I told Mr. Kant say 5.30, but I'll text him. Okay, thank you, sir. The drum major walks away. Great work, Jakey. You guys slayed it. And gals. Thanks, you too. Grace approaches from behind. Nick. Nick turns and sees Grace. Oh, Lee Buckets. Grace! <laughs> he squeals. Ah! Ah! Grace squeals even louder and rushes into his arms for a huge hug that takes them both right off the stage. Off camera, they oh. land with a thud. Exterior, Boise High School Gymnasium, steps. Grace sits next to Nick on the steps of the gym. Nick holds an ice pack to the side of his head as the school's athletic trainer finishes checking his eyes. <clears throat> You're clear. No concussion. Thanks, Mel. I'll, I'll put this back in your, your box before I go. Thanks. The athletic trainer begins away. Uh, it was nice to meet you. Welcome home. Thank you. You too. Sorry. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm good. You good? I'm, yeah, I'm good. I mean, you broke my fall, like, entirely. Well. I fell for you in high school. Why not do it again, huh? Oh, stop. I'm worried about you, though. Your head sounded like a watermelon. Like it's empty? <laughs> no, it's, it's the gym floor. Oh. Uh, yeah. The wood. I'm fine. Mm. Well, tell me immediately if you start to feel dizzy or nauseous or sensitive to light or sound. <laughs> what are you, like a doctor now? Yes. Really? <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> well, a pediatrician, specifically. Where? Los Angeles. That is awesome. Congrats. Thanks. LA. Wow. So you're killing it. <laughs> Married? Kids? No, no, no. Not yet. It's It's been, um, it's been quite a journey. Yeah, I bet. You keep in touch with anybody? Any of the old gang? Um, not really. Just Krista. She's visited me a few times. I see her when I'm in town. Do you guys still hang out? Hang out? No. Uh, but Matt is on my bowling team. Ah, really? Yeah. He's really good, too. Their daughter, Emily. Whew, she's a little fireball, right? So smart. <laughs> she is. Yeah. She's growing up so fast. Too fast. They're actually picking me up here soon. We're going shopping. Doing some Christmas shopping. I haven't even started. Grace checks her cell phone for time and texts. Well, that's fun. How fun. That'll be that'll be fun. Yeah. I've looked for you um on in, um you're not on social media at all. No. I I I tried to get into it, but too distracting from everything. <laughs> she puts her totally. phone down. You looked for me though? I I mean I look for everyone. I'm I look everyone up from time to time. 
it's just cool to see what people are up to, you know? Sure. Yeah. Grace receives a text. Oh, she's almost here. Sorry. No problem. No problem. I'll see you Sunday. Yeah. They stand up. She suddenly remembers why she's there. Oh, um, I have to, I have to get the cape and crown from your dad. My dad? Yeah. Two marching band students walk by. Bye, Miss DeWitt. Sweet moves up there. You're so craft. <laughs> yeah, you're so craft, Mr. D. Thanks, Martin. Taylor, you guys sounded great out there. See you Sunday. See ya. Hi. Grace can't believe she didn't realize it before. Or do it. Sequel. Followed in his father's footsteps. It did. <laughs> You're the principal? I'm the principal. <laughs> wow. Let's go get your stuff. Camera holds the shot. They begin to walk off camera. It's in my dad's office. Don't make fun of me. Exterior, Boise High School, front steps, a little later. Grace and Nick wait for Grace's ride on the front steps of the school. Nick holds the box with her cape and crown. He smiles to himself, reminiscing. Grace notices. What? We were standing right here, junior year. Grace knows exactly what he's remembering. My mom was late picking us up. You were so sweet waiting with me. I went in for the kiss. Oh, I've never been so scared. I'm sorry I ruined it. Ruined it? Yeah, I, I turned away. You got my cheek. You went for my lips, right? Well, yeah, but <laughs> I, I just thought you meant for me to get your cheek. I thought that was on purpose. Um, I don't know. I was scared too, I guess. That was my first kiss. It was my cheek. I still counted it. Mm. Count it. I count it. Mm, no. She smiles. I actually think of... He stops abruptly. What? Uh, I, I, it's embarrassing. Come on. You know how, like, you hear a song you really love for the first time, and then... Each time you hear it, you remember where you were the first time you hear, heard it. I do, yeah. Every time I climb these steps, I think of that moment. Beat. Why didn't you ever try again? Krista's SUV pulls up to the curb. There she is! Exterior, Boise High School, Krista's SUV, continuous. Grace and Nick approach Krista's vehicle. Krista in the driver's seat. Emily in the back on her booster. Krista rolls the windows down. Hi, Grace. Hey, Nick. Hiya, Uncle Nick. Hi, girls. Hi. You want this in the back? Actually, the there's storage in the front. Uh, under the hood? Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Jetson style. Nick loads the box in. Do you ladies have fun shopping? We will. Grace hugs him. Bye. It was great to see you. You too. Of course. Grace gets in the passenger side. Hey, we should... The three of us, we should uh, find a time to hang out while you're in town. You know, grab a drink, reminisce. Okay. That would be great. The Room 30 Trio rides again. Totally. Let's do it. I'd love that. Okay. All right. Bye. 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 Interior, Krista's SUV. Across the seat, Krista and Grace hug. Good. It was good. Krista begins to drive to the mall. Not in this morning? Yes, gosh, was that this morning? Yeah, it was. You will see. <laughs> it is perfect as always. Stop. Compared to yours, I just, I can't. You look younger than ever. That's because I am, duh. Okay. Mommy, it's not nice to be arrogant. <laughs> Krista's daughter, Emily, is seven years old going on 40. She's a confident, spunky kid whose curiosity knows no bounds. Kidding, baby. She knows I'm kidding. 
But seriously, I have a new moisturizer you have to try. Rewinds oh. the clock like a literal freaking time machine. Mommy, language! You're right, baby. Don't say freaking. Auntie Grace, remember me? I'm Emily. Of course I remember you, sweetheart. I met you the day you were born. Wait, what? How? I visited you in the hospital. Oh, my mommy delivered me in the cesarean section because I was 11 pounds. Well, technically 11 pounds and 3 ounces. <laughs> em, remember what we talked about? How you shouldn't just say everything you... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Filter. Thanks, Mom. Thank you. Interior, Barnes & Noble. A little later, Grace, Krista, and Emily browse through the gift section of a bookstore. Matt asked for a tea ball. I didn't even know what that what, that was a thing. I had to look it up. Amazon can't get one here till after Christmas. Dumb. Why do we even pay for Prime? Clara Dowd said I could find them here. You should ask an employee, Mommy. Great idea, babe. Camel, Clara? Yeah. <laughs> oh, she married Leo Dowd. Wow. Who's that? A friend, honey. Her name is Camel? No. Why do you call her that? You know what? Why don't you take me to the children's section and help me pick out a Christmas present for you? Okay. Thank you, bunches. Interior, Barnes & Noble, children's section, moments later. Grace and Emily browse the kids' book section, which has many other offerings, including toys, a small play area, train set, a stage with benches, and a small clubhouse. Okay, so what do you like? American Girl books, Disney stories? Oh, Clifford's a big deal, right? Emily, an aisle away from Grace, approaches a nearby employee. Excuse me, do you have any books about James Webb Space Telescope? Um, I, I don't know. Is that like, um, Star Wars? Similar, but it's real. Hmm, I'm not familiar. Let's go look it up. A nearby customer chimes in. Uh, yeah, the James Webb Space Telescope launches uh, next weekend on Christmas. Grace stops in her tracks. She knows that voice. Her breath escapes her as her eyes confirm, speaking to Emily and the employee, carrying a small boy, is David Hockley. Grace panics. Her makeup's not right. Her hair probably needs recurling. She's not ready for him to see her yet. She gets on her hands and knees, hides in the small clubhouse nearby. She peeks through the window. Uh, there probably won't be any books about the James Webb yet, uh, especially not in this area. But you're interested in space, sweetie? Uh, space and medicine. Most, space and medicine mostly, with a focus on holistic spiritual wellness. Well, if you don't mind me asking, how does the telescope tie in? I'm intrigued by the possibility of looking into the future, even if that future isn't ours. I think it's important to explore who we are and in our poor, and in our purpose. Okay. Well, uh, uh, <laughs> that's wonderful. Let me show you a book my nephews love. Grace watches as their voices trail off to the next aisle. David leads Emily to the nonfiction space panel of books. The employee, looking around for Emily's guardian, hangs back but keeps an eye on the child. David finds the book he's looking for, shows to Emily. Grace can barely hear as she reads the cover. Astrophysics for Young People in a Hurry by Neil de... DeGrasse. Tyson. Yes, great job. You're a great reader. They high five. Emily is excited, content with the selection. She looks around, doesn't see Grace, calls out. Grace? Auntie Grace? She searches. Silence. The employee and David join the search. Uh, Grace. Grace? Auntie Grace? Grace is too embarrassed to show herself. The awkwardness level continues to climb as the employee approaches a random customer. Excuse me, is your name Grace? The customer shakes her head. No, Emily is screaming now. Grace Dawson! David's head tilts in recognition. Great, Grace Dawson? 
<laughs> your, your aunt is... It, this has gone too far. Grace hits her head on the doorframe as she crawls out of the nearby clubhouse. She and David lock eyes. Grace Dawson. He smiles, overjoyed to see her. She smiles, embarrassed. David unleashes a large <laughs> belly laugh and scoops her up in an aggressive bear hug, <laughs> lifting her off the ground. Interior Dawson home, dining room, night. Grace tells Anna and Rose the story over a home-cooked supper. And then what happened? Well, chit-chatted for a few extraordinarily long, awkward minutes, and then we said, see you Sunday. Mm. What, was he polite? Yes, yes, very. Did he smell good? Like a uh, hot toddy with cloves. Oh, Cosmo. Oh, sorry. Was the, was the child his? Oh, no. Apparently he has 10 nephews. Huge family. Remind me, you dated him in high school. No, mm -mm. no, he's always been way, way out of my league. Honey, no one has ever been out of your league. Mm. Is he married? He wasn't wearing a ring. Girlfriend? I don't know. Boyfriend? <laughs> Didn't ask. <laughs> You should have. But, yeah, and just how would that question go on Rose? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm blitzed. <laughs> Rose sips her wine, realizes the silliness of it all. She starts to laugh. <laughs> she laughs wine out of her nose. Oh. oh. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> Grace watched the whole thing and they all laugh. <laughs> my nose. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> all three women are now a mess. They're laughing at this. Anna suddenly realizes. Oh my goodness, Auntie, what are you going to wear? Oh my gosh, what am I going to wear? I have nothing to wear. Oh, I have an idea. Let me take you shopping tomorrow. Your ball gown will be my gift to you. Objection. I am her mother. It will be my gift. Our gift. They look up. They look to Grace. She's trepidatious at first, but then her face lights up. Sounds fun. Anna and Rose cheer. Piano yeah. music crescendos. Interior, Dawson home, family room, later. The fire roars and It's a Wonderful Life plays, muted, on the television. The Dawson ladies are huddled around the piano. Grace plays with Anna and Rose flanking the sides, singing, Baby, It's Cold Outside. Anna sings the female part. Rose sings the male. They're all smiled, smiles, cozied in their holiday pajamas with hot cocoa or hot toddies within reach. It is a wonderfully joyous evening filled with happy, warm hearts. Exterior, Dawson home, night. Snow falls, twinkling in the streetlights. Cross dissolve to exterior, Dawson home, morning. Same camera shot, but night has blossomed into a crisp, snow-layered morning. Anna, bundled up, exits the house out to the driveway for the newspaper. She finds it, picks it up. As she does, she notices a dark-colored sedan with tinted windows, its motor running, idling across the street. She squints. Peering closer through the tent, she sees only the silhouette of a person in the driver's seat. The car shifts into drive and pulls away. Interior, Dawson home, kitchen. Aunt Rose stands, eating a bowl of granola, sipping tea. Anna paces nervously. You didn't get the license plate? I didn't think of that. What? Grace enters. What's going on? Uh, your mother has a stalker. A stalker? A peeping Tom. What? Which window? Did you call the police? There was not a peeping Tom. There was someone out in a car in the front. In the driveway? On the street. Right out front? Across the street. Uh, well, that's not illegal. I'll bet it was that free cruise fella. That's what I was thinking. Mm -hmm. Okay, whoever it was, was probably just warming up their car. I don't know. It was a little sus. Grace looks at her sideways. Did you just use sus in a sentence, Aunt Rose? Didn't I use it correctly? <laughs> yeah actually 
It is not in the stars to hold our destiny, but in ourselves. Well, whatever it was, I shall not let it ruin today. I'm so excited. Mm -hmm, same. same. Hugh Holland Oates, you make my dreams come true. Dress shopping montage series of shots. Over the music, a montage takes us along with the Dawson ladies as they take us on a ride throughout their day. Driving into town in the VW van, windows down. Dancing, dress shopping, wine tasting, dress shopping, lunch, dress shopping, wine tasting, found the dress, happy champagne, <laughs> and montage. Exterior, Krista's home, establishing shot. An upscale modern home on the east end of Boise with a view of the foothills. Interior, Krista's home, living room. Grace and Krista drink big glasses of expensive wine on couches of Italian leather near a six-foot-tall fireplace. It's a strapless gown, sweetheart neck, tool overlay studded with crystals and roses. Sounds amazing. What color? It's like a Cinderella blue. Well, it sounds sexy as hell, and I can't wait to see pictures. Oh, thanks. I wish you could come. Me too. Long beat. Krista stares into the fire. I wish we could do it all again. And together, don't you? What? The day and the wine are catching up to these two. High school. Why can't we do it all again? Knowing what we know now, you know? Not take it so seriously and really appreciate it for what it is. There's like a really profound quote for that, but I can't think. <laughs> Grace nods and looks out the large pane glass windows at the lights in the foothills. I I went on a match date in October. <laughs> no shit. You didn't tell me about this. I'm telling you. No. Okay, so. The kid was cute, but he, he couldn't have been older than 30, which is fine. I don't need you to be my age. But I need you to be a grown-up. Exactly. So he takes me to dinner at the bowling alley at Hollywood and Highland, which is nice. I mean, it, it's – Way, way overpriced. Yes, yes. And I appreciate that, but – It's a freaking bowling alley. Exactly. Okay, so it just keeps getting worse. Oh, no. So he asks me, why am I crying? Wait, you're crying? <laughs> I guess. I'm like watching this this movie of my life in real time. I'm here for this. I start saying how I, <laughs> I miss being connected to the realms of honesty. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> realms? Of honesty. This is everything. Remember that one year you came out, we went to the Getty? It was life-changing. Right? So I tell him about that. You told him about that, mm -hmm. naturally. Mm -hmm. And he listens and he thinks and he sits up and he says, I would love to take you to a museum. He pays the check. Listen for that. Yes. And he walks me down the block to Madame Toussaint's. Isn't, isn't mm -hmm. that the wax museum? Yes. And you wanted to go to the Getty? <laughs> Correct. So here I am. Oh, good. Good. There's more. In a Hollywood wax museum. Three cocktails in and emotional. That's right. And I'm looking at these sculptures. I mean, I mean, they're pretty good though, right? From what I've seen. They are. They're good. And that's the thing. I'm walking along. I'm looking at all these familiar faces. They're like exact replicas of the people they're trying to be, but like with nothing inside. So I walked from room to room. I'm looking face after face, famous people, and all I could see was me. Hollow, no pulse, but smiling. Long, extended beat. The fire crackles, filling the silence until... Well, that's tragic. <laughs> Krista gets up. I'm getting another bottle. You're crashing here tonight. Yep. Interior, Dawson home, foyer, almost noon. 
The door opens. Light floods in. A terribly hungover Grace enters. The same outfit she had on all day yesterday, accessorized by the largest sunglasses that Krista could lend her. Camera leads Grace in one continuous shot as her mother and aunt follow her, peppering her with questions. Grace, honey, are you okay? I don't hear anything. Uh, do you have any idea? It's almost noon. Do you have your phone? I was at Krista's, like I told you. Uh, you didn't answer your phone. Grace finally arrives at her bedroom door, opens it, steps in, faces Rose and Anna. Um, my phone died. I'm sorry. Batteries run out. It's it's what it's what batteries do, and I'm sorry you were worried. I am a responsible adult. Yes, you better believe I'm going to take a little baby nap before Krista comes over to help me get fierce tonight. And no, I will not oversleep. And no, I don't need you to set an alarm. I can do that. I'm an adult. I appreciate you and how much you care about me. And I just, I love you so much. Rose shuts the door. Anna and Rose look at each other. Interior, Boise High School Gymnasium, locker room, night. Muffled dance music and announcements can be heard through the walls of the locker room. David in his tuxedo and Grace in her gown await their cue to enter the ball. You look incredible. Thank you. You too. <laughs> I don't remember your eyes being so... chocolatey. Grace blushes. And there's dimples. <laughs> You're too much. Hey, check this out. Through the wall, the band plays the iconic intro to 2001 A Space Odyssey. David shows her his cufflinks. She gasps. Oh my gosh! Recognize those? Of course I gave those to you! <laughs> the day we graduated. You kept them? I wear them all the time. We hear Nick's voice come over the loudspeaker and intercom. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in giving a big, warm Boise High School welcome. David takes Grace's hand. Are you ready for this? To the 2001 Winter Ball King and Queen. I never thought I'd be so ready. He smiles. Interior, Boise High School Gymnasium, Winter Ball. The gym is filled with students, faculty, and chaperones. The marching band lines the walls. On stage, the drum major conducts the band into the swelling grand finale of the piece. David Hockley and Grace Dawson! The crowd cheers. The band launches into Bootylicious. There's a very dreamlike feeling about the next sequence. Grace and David, hand in hand, make their way into the gym toward the dance floor. Grace waves, smiling ear to ear. Her ball gown flows behind her. Phones are held out all around them, taking pictures and videos. She exchanges glances with David. The short walk to the dance floor, a moment Grace will never forget, ends with the royal couple alone in the spotlight in the center of the floor. On stage. And now, the king and queen will share the royal dance. Grace and David remove their capes, which are collected by a staff member. The number one chart from 2001 comes over the sound system, hanging by a moment by Lifehouse. Grace wraps her arm around David's neck. He wraps his around her waist and pulls her close. Desperate for changing, starving for truth. David and Grace look like true royalty. Grace simply beams in her Cinderella blue dress. The spotlight glistens magically off the beaded bodice of her gown and her queen's tiara. They sway to the music. Closer to where I started, chasing after you. David's tuxedo perfectly tailored to his sturdy, chiseled frame, is trimmed with a gold bow tie and gum bun, which perfectly complement the crown on his head. As the song's chorus kicks in, 
David steps out, twirls Grace like it was choreographed. It wasn't. He's just that perfect. I've fallen even more in love with you. <laughs> she laughs as he leads, spinning her by the waist. Letting go of all of hell, don't you? He pulls her back in, gracefully dips her. I'm standing here until you make me move. At the bottom of the dip, he supports her head, staring into her eyes. Could this be the most magical moment of Grace's life? I'm hanging by a moment here with you. He presses his lips to hers in a passionate kiss. The crowd loses their minds, screaming, taking pictures, etc. Nope, we narrated too soon. This is the most magical moment of Grace's life. On stage, Nick watches in a daze. Psst. The assistant principal gets his attention, indicates to the dance floor. Announcement? Nick snaps out of it, hears the cheering crowd, smiles. Everyone's having a great time, right? He gets back on the microphone. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the king and queen would like to invite you all to join them on the dance floor for the royal dance. David brings Grace back upright as the dance floor fills with couples swaying all around them. She looks around, soaking in this fairy tale dream come true. Interior Boise High School Gymnasium, a few minutes later, David and Grace are now on stage together with Nick at the mic stand, center stage. The crowd is hushed, anxiously waiting the announcement. And now to crown 2021's winter ball queen, her majesty herself, Grace Dawson! The crowd applauds mildly. As Grace steps to the microphone, Nick hands her the envelope and she opens it. The 2021 Boise High School winter ball queen is Christina Mills! The crowd cheers as Christina excitedly rushes onto the stage. Improvised thank yous <laughs> abound. The assistant principal hands her a large bouquet of white roses. Nick drapes the cape around her shoulders. Grace puts the crown on her head. Congratulations! Thank you, thank you. <laughs> and now uh, to crown our new king, please welcome His Majesty David Hockley. The crowd cheers wildly as David steps to the mic. David eats up every second. He was made for this moment, pointing at people, winking, blowing kisses, a few quick bows. The crowd loves it. He lets this go on far too long. <clears throat> hey, you Nick. good? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nick hands <clears throat> in the envelope. <clears throat> uh, all right. All right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, laughs, and some cat calls. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, <laughs> it is my absolute pleasure to announce, although I'm sad to give this bad boy away, the 2021 Boise High School Winter Ball King is... Dramatic silence. Again, too long. Please, man, just read it. <laughs> Zachary Ginovola. The crowd cheers as Zachary modestly walks onto the stage, improvised thanks and etc. The assistant principal hands him a large bouquet of white roses. Nick drapes the cape around his shoulders. David puts the crown on his head. Your winter ball, king and queen! The crowd cheers once more. Dance music begins. The dance floor starts rocking again. On stage, the new king, Zachary, offers his bouquet to Grace. I'd uh, like for you to have these. Oh my gosh, you're so sweet. She considers, then decides to try and play matchmaker. They are beautiful, but you know who I think might appreciate them more? She gestures to the new queen, Christina. Yeah, um, she's actually a horrible person in real life, so... Oh. Yeah. He offers again, and this time, Grace accepts. Thank you. You look beautiful, ma'am. <laughs> Thank you. David takes Grace's hand and leads her off stage. Nick watches from the stage as they leave the gym together. Exterior, Boise High School Gymnasium, moments later. Grace and David spill out onto the front steps, laughing. 
Grace now has her peacoat on over her gown and she carries the roses and her purse. David sucks in the crisp evening, evening air, invigorated. Woo! That was amazing! <laughs> Grace laughs while she shuts Hey, in. don't scare the children! David looks around at the students who left early, waiting for their rides. <laughs> sorry, 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 kids. A thousand pardons. <sighs> David looks up. The stars are beautiful tonight. Hmm. Can hardly see them with all the streetlights. Gets an idea. Can I show you something? Sure. Come, my queen. Oh. <laughs> Exterior. Zoo. Boise. Parking lot. Not far from the high school in downtown Boise lies Julia Davis Park home of Boise's famous zoo and nature conservation site, Zoo Boise. David's green Land Rover pulls into the parking lot. He and Grace get out. What on earth are we doing here? You see? I'm sure it's closed. Exterior, Zoo Boise, front gate. Moments later, David takes his keys from his pocket. Don't tell me you own the zoo too. No, no, no. The city owns the zoo. I'm just head caretaker. Ah. He swings the gate open. Exterior, Zoo Boise. Moments later, they stroll through the zoo, arm in arm. There's something quite mystical about being alone in such a place. Grace looks at the exhibits as they pass. Are most of the animals sleeping? Mm, some of them, but that's not why we're here. Okay. Hey. Did you get the invite to my birthday party? It's gonna be right here this Thursday night. Uh, invite, no. It's, it's, it's a public event, it's on Facebook. I don't know how far it got passed along, but everyone is welcome. Oh, fun. Indeed. <clears throat> hear ye, hear ye! Oh. Come one, come all, to celebrate the birth of David, the 23rd of December. Christmas Eve, Eve, mm -hmm. enjoyed catered hors d'oeuvres and open bar in the open air of this animal kingdom. <laughs> well, anyone that was sleeping isn't anymore. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> Exterior, Zoo Boise, conservation crews, dock. Grace and David cross the dock to a small boat in the narrow lagoon lined with low hanging trees. Okay, what is even going on? David steps into the boat, turns, and offers his hand. If my queen would so kindly accept her king's invitation to take in the night's stars upon the waters of the majestic zoo Boise Lagoon under the light of this eve's winter moon? I accept. She places her hand in his, and he helps her into the boat. Exterior, Zoo Boise. Lagoon. With two large oars, David paddles the small dinghy through the lagoon. Grace hears unfamiliar animal sounds in the trees as they pass by. David notices. Ah, uh, uh, potus monkeys. They're harmless. Oh. A loud shriek makes her practically jump oh. out of the boat. <laughs> the, the endangered white-backed vultures. Also harmless. Is there anything else I should know about? Like maybe in advance? No, no, no. I think that's it. Another shriek. <gasps> oh. Exterior, Boise Square Park, pond, moments later. David paddles the boat through the mouth of the lagoon where the trees open up and release them into the large pond in Boise Square Park. <laughs> Here we are. I give you the stars. David makes a big two-handed gesture to the sky. She looks up, looks around, takes it all in. Just unbelievable. Have there ever been this many stars in the sky? <laughs> it's <laughs> miraculous, right? N nothing man makes will ever hold a candle to the beauty of nature. The stars are undeniably brighter from this vantage, and the breathtaking view of the Boise skyline dances on the water. The night is perfectly crisp, quiet, and still. 
I'd forgotten how beautiful Boise is. Sometimes it takes a step away from something to really appreciate it. This all makes me want to come home. You are home. For good. Oh. They search each other's eyes. You know, one of my sisters is on the hiring board at St. Luke's. Really? I could send her your resume. See if there's a chance we could open that door. She considers. I'd like that. I mean, no pressure. I'm not like trying to change your life or anything. No, no, no. I've I've been looking for... I've felt lost out there. I've been feeling trapped for some time now and... Ironically, it's by the walls that I've built. I've been marching relentlessly down this path, not knowing where I was going or whose beat I was marching to. I've been living without purpose, without joy. I just want to feel like I'm part of something. I want to laugh again, play music feel loved long beat they gaze at each other a smile sneaks across david's lips if there was ever a perfect chance for him to kiss her again this is it his phone chimes in his pocket he takes it out to check it and then checks an app and then types some things and then checks something else you know what i mean you know what i mean yeah. His yeah. phone chimes again, and he checks it, and he types some more. Exterior, Dawson home, establishing shot. David's Land Rover pulls up to the house. Exterior, Dawson home, moments later. David escorts Grace, with her white roses, to her doorstep. Hey, um, can I get your phone number in case we... Uh, so I don't have to use Facebook to call you? <laughs> of course. He takes out his phone. You want me to just text me from yours so you have it? Uh, sure. That's always easier. He sets his phone up to text and hands it to her. And if uh, anyone sends you good photos from the dance, we can share them? Of course. Yeah, thanks. Well, I can't thank you enough for just the most magical night. It was everything I dreamed it would be. Thank you. Everything? She waits for a kiss. It's not coming. Not to be outdone, she leans in and he backs away. Whoa. What? Uh, I'm so sorry. What? I can't. I'm... <sighs> spoken for. What? I have a girlfriend. I'm sorry? I'm... I'm in a relationship. I'm sorry if I gave you the wrong impression. The wrong... The wrong impression. Da David. You kissed me in front of hundreds of people. And they loved it, didn't they? I mean, Julie. W Julie. D uh, Ju uh, my my girlfriend. You you would love her. She's great. I, it was her idea. I mean, I, you can meet her on my birthday. She'll be in town for Thursday. The kiss was your girlfriend's idea. Yeah, yeah, it was a good one. Blew everyone's minds. She said the socials are blowing up with our dance. The town is buzzing. There are hashtags, chat threads. They ate it up. My Insta already has 262 new followers. Have you checked yours? She doesn't respond. You gotta admit, it was a great show. 
It was a lie. David stops, finally sees the pain in her eyes. The weight of his naivete finally presses him hard. I'm sorry, I owe you an apology. You think? I, I should have cleared it with you first. I guess it, I didn't, I didn't expect you to actually think it. It was real? He nods, ashamed. Now I see how that might have been misinterpreted. She tries to hold back her tears, but they escape. I think maybe I should go. She nods. Yes. Okay. No hard feelings. I mean, it was fun, right? He tries to hug her. She hits him hard in the face. Black. Interior, Dawson home, Grace's bedroom. Grace quietly enters her room in a daze. Tears still on her face, her mascara now running. The room is dimly lit by the small lamp on her nightstand. She drops her purse in the middle of the floor, removes her peacoat, drops that as well. She looks around. Her focus lands on the Dawson's Creek poster. Overwhelmed with emotion, she tears the poster off the wall. Next goes Avril, finally in sync. She crawls into her bed, still in her gown, and pulls the covers over her head. Exterior, Dawson home, morning. Anna exits the house for the morning paper. Halfway down the drive, she notices the dark-colored sedan with tinted windows idling across the street. She stops, staring at the vehicle, frozen with fear. She slowly reaches into her pocket, takes out her phone. The vehicle shifts into drive and begins away. No, 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 no. She attempts to get a photo of the license plate as it turns down the next street. It's gone. She checks her photo. Too blurry. She growls to herself. Interior, Krista's home, kitchen. Krista cracks eggs into a sizzling frying pan in her huge white marble kitchen as she talks on speakerphone. At the breakfast bar... Emily reads a paperback copy of Jonathan Livingston Siegel. I'll admit when I saw all the videos, I was freaking out, but it did feel very fast. I mean, not like I was judging. It was just like, I know you, you know? An interior, Dawson's, Dawson home, Grace's room, continuous. Grace, on the other end, sits at the foot of the bed. I know, I know. It, it happened so fast. It felt... Too good to be true from the start. I just I wanted to believe it. Intercut phone conversation. Krista's kitchen. Grace's bedroom. Who could blame you? You had no idea. It was like a perfect fairy tale moment. Fairy tales are fiction. Oh, good morning, Emily. Hi, Auntie Grace. You're exactly right, babe. Fairy tales are fiction. I know. Honestly, the more I think about it, the more I'm just mad at myself for buying into my own fantasy. Are the eggs great at organic? I think so. Pasture raised. Pasture corn, raised. Corn and soy free? No, honey, those are too expensive. Well, at least he acknowledged he totally should have talked to you about the kiss before it happened. A hundred percent. Well, how was the rest of the night? Amazing. Fun. Best day of my life, honestly. He was the perfect gentleman. We had a great time. Well, that means we have till Thursday to stalk this Julie and strategize our coup d'etat. What? No, I'm not a homewrecker. Can't wreck a home that doesn't exist yet. How existential, Mom. <sighs> no hint of her on his socials. Right. So... We do some digging and find a way to make David realize that all he wants for Christmas is you. Emily looks up from her book. Anyone get that? Eggs? Essential? Interior, Dawson home, kitchen. A little later. 
Anna and Rose sit at the breakfast nook. Anna reads the paper. Rose scrolls her iPad. Grace enters, freshly showered, in sweats. Without looking up, Rose says... Uh, I, I, my video. Okay. Oh, well, if it isn't the bell of Boise. Morning, honey. Good morning. I found these roses on the sink. I put them on a vase for you. Thanks. Rough night. Hmm? That was fine. Fine enough for the front page. Grace looks over. Sure enough, there on the cover of the newspaper is a large color photo of The Kiss. The headline across the top reads A Storybook Ball. Spill the tea. What? No, I just brewed it. The tea is, it was all made up fiction. The Kiss was staged? His girlfriend's idea. A show. Want me to castrate him? No, thanks for the offer, though. That's very kind. <clears throat> I got you, girl. Anytime. Wait, so so you were you were in on this? Oh yeah, mm, totally. Bravo! Five stars. Ninety-five percent fresh. And I gets her phone. Goes to Grace. Will you take a look at this? The stalker. Yeah, that car was back. This morning. Anna shows her the photo. Can you read that plate? Grace squints. Mm, not even a little bit. Maybe put up some actual cameras, Mom. Oh, yes. Brilliant. Anna hurries away. So, will there be an encore of your show? Interior, Mulligan's Pub, corner table, later. Grace and Krista sit at a high top in the corner of the pub. A third cider on the table awaits their final companion, but the girls have already started in on theirs. Krista shows Grace her phone. She's an ER nurse in Portland, so now we know he's already into, like, doctors. She's a nurse. Right? You win that category. She's a brunette. Boom. She's 35, but whatever. You look like you're 28. You've got a history with him. She can compete with that. That doesn't mean... You're brilliant. You're gorgeous. You're successful. You came up together and you told him you want to move back. Do you have any idea how hard it is to keep up a long-distance relationship? That's the worst. Right? Look, I'm not saying it's in the bag. All I'm saying is... Let's knock his socks off on Thursday and see what happens. We'll go shopping. Make sure you look sexy as hell. Get you a date. Do some more digging. A date? Oh, yeah. Nothing makes a guy want you more than thinking he can't have you. I guess. It's a known fact. It's going to be great. I'm really excited about this. From halfway across the pub, we hear... Rio! They see Nick across the pub. He points to the bar. Shots! <laughs> Interior, Mulligan's pub, a corner table a little later. Empty shot glasses between them. The three enjoy their ciders. They're having a great time. A deck of pub cards on the table. Nick draws one, reads... Oh, this is a good one. Favorite movie scene. Go. Uh, I mean... Pretty much any scene from The Notebook? No, no, you have to pick one. Nick imitates Ryan Gosling as Noah, throws up his hands. What do you want? Okay, uh... What do you want, Allie? What do you want? Fine, the rain scene, when they finally kiss. Yes! Good one. It wasn't over. It still isn't over! Oh, yes! Oh, good one! Grace? Uh, okay, the creme brulee scene in my best friend's wedding. Some things never change. <laughs> creme brulee can never be jello. You can never be jello. I have to be jello. You're never gonna be jello. <laughs> you do nail that every time. 
Nick applauds the performance of the bartender and drops another round of whiskey shots. On the house. Good to have you back. Oh, thank you oh. so much. Thank you, Chad. Enjoy. Go. Oh, okay. They, they raise the shots. <clears throat> to the Boise High Room, 30 homeroom hoodlums. Birdies. <laughs> Room 30 Trio. Ho! Ho! They clink and a shoot. <laughs> Krista's phone chimes and she reads it. Oh, good Lord. You okay? Uh, Matt says, don't worry, everything's fine, but here's here to pick me up. She stands, collects her things. Apparently, Emily lit her biochem lab on fire. <gasps> I'm sorry. Oh, no, that sounds, that's bad. I'm sure she's okay. I, I can tell when he's panicked. Keep us posted. I will. Hey, okay, bye, girl. Call me. Quick goodbyes and hugs, etc. And Krista is gone. Mm, that's, that's scary. i sure everything's fine. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right? Sure. Eight. So. Yes. I had no idea you were with David Hockley. Okay, so um, about that. We're not. No? No, we totally staged that to make people lose their minds. What? It was a good one, right? Well, yeah. Well, what? I was convinced. I'm sorry, I, I should have cleared it with you. No, what? No, Are you kidding? No, that was a. I mean, <laughs> did you see the paper today? Yeah. It's been a long time since BHS was in the news for something positive. Beat. So, what's yours? Hmm? Favorite movie scene? Oh. Uh, <clears throat> probably still d say anything. The boombox scene. You remember that one, right? We watched it. Yeah. Yeah. Three times. Great movie. Great scene. It is. Why is it your favorite? Um, just outside her window, standing in the rain. Well, John Cusack. Duh. Naturally. But just, you know, playing her this love song, vulnerable for all to see, the sacrifice, the, the unwavering show of humility for love. Yeah, it's a good one. The digital pub jukebox plays True by Spandau Ballet. The song takes Grace and Nick right back. Okay. <laughs> we have to dance. No dance floor. Who cares? We dance to this. At Winter Ball. Winter Ball. He nods, stands, offers his hand. She takes it. Interior, Mulligan's Pub, moments later. The song continues. They dance where they've found some space between tables. Is this still your favorite song? Hands down. Nothing better. I still don't understand half the lyrics, but <laughs> the ones I get. So good. I bought a ticket to the world, and now I've come back again. There's no place like home. The people. Hmm? People. People are what make makes home home, right? Your mom. Your mom. <laughs> Ooh, sick burn. <laughs> but yeah, your mom, my mom. Home is where the heart is. And the heart is with the people you care about, right? We've got jobs, we've got things, but without the people we love, where is home? Grace lets this sink in. I bought a ticket to the world, 
but I always come back to the people I love. Doesn't flow as nice, but that's how I've always heard it. She puts her head on his shoulder and they sway to the music. As the chorus comes to an end, they sing along to the lyrics. I know this much, much is true. true. Exterior Mulligan's Pub parking lot later. Grace and Nick improvise conversation as they walk to their cars at the end of the night. They near Aunt Rose's van, which is parked right next to Krista's Tesla SUV. You're sure you're good to drive? Positive, yes. Thank you. I mean, I wish I had a car that could drive itself like some people. Right. Why did Matt even come pick her up? That car could have just... <laughs> but seriously, though, do you need, a, you need a ride? I'll take you. No, no, I'm, I'm fine. I promise. Okay. I trust you. They linger. This is really fun. Let's do it again before you go, huh? Definitely. Well, good night, Grace. He hugs her. Good night. He begins away and she calls out. Nick. He stops, turns. Are you busy Thursday night? Hugh, TBD, energetic 80s music. Birthday prep montage, series of shots. Shopping, Krista and Grace hit all the hottest modern trendy shops in Boise, finding the sexiest outfits possible for David's birthday party. Tanning, facials, nails, hair, makeup, just as they did for high school dances, Krista and Grace joke and gossip as they do their makeup together in Grace's bedroom. Grace's posters, scotch taped back together, are back up on the wall. From the hallway, Anna watches the girls do their makeup through the slightly open door, just like the good old days. She turns, looks at a Dawson family photo, circa 2001, complete with her late husband, hanging by the wall hall near Grace's bedroom door. She continues to watch and listen to her baby's laughter. Exterior, Zoo Boise, parking lot, Thursday night. Nick, dressed in a suit with no tie and pants that are too short with no socks, leans against his car, checking his phone, waiting for his friends in the parking lot. The zoo is lit up in the background, spotlights, distant party music, conversation, and laughter. Finally, he spots Krista's SUV pulling into a parking spot. They exchange improvised haze and highs as Matt and Krista exit the front seats. Sorry. Child lock. Krista opens the rear door and, slow motion with music, Grace steps out. Nick's mouth literally falls open. She looks absolutely stunning, head to toe. Time resumes normalcy as she approaches Nick. Hi! She hugs him. You. Wow. You look amazing. Thank you. You too. They stare at each other just long enough to make it awkward for Matt and Krista. Yes, please. Grace wraps her arm in Nick's. Matt takes Krista's hand. Exterior, Zoo Boise, front gates. Just inside the gates of the zoo, David greets guests alongside his girlfriend, Julie. David wears a black and blue tuxedo, which, ironically, nicely complements the new shiner under his right eye. Julie, 35, a beautiful, spunky, curly-haired brunette, looks fantastic in her short, tight, seal blue dress. As they finish welcoming a group to the party, David turns and his eyes grow wide. Exterior, Zoo Boise, front gates, continuous. Party music kicks in and we get a sexy slow motion group walking shot a la Reservoir Dogs, Armageddon, etc. of Matt, Krista, Grace, and Nick all looking fierce AF walking into the party. Exterior, Zoo Boise, front gates, continuous. Well, what an honor you all made it. Thank you for coming. 
They improvise. Sentiment says David hugs Matt and Krista together, hugs Grace, and then before he can hug Nick, he introduces Julie. May I introduce my girlfriend, Julie? These are some high school friends, uh, Matt, Krista, Grace, and... Um... Nick. That's right. Uh, Nick's dad. God, Nick's dad was the principal when we were there. Ah, and I'm actually... Uh, the more the merrier. I'm just... I'm just so glad you all came. It's a pleasure to meet you all, truly. David looks around. You know what? While there's a lull in arrivals, I'm gonna grab a drink. Can I, can I get you guys anything? I'll come with you. Great. Nick? Of course. Grace Martini? Yes, please. Martini too? Thanks, Matt. Excuse us, ladies. The gentlemen step away. Nothing for you, Julie? You're not pregnant, are you? I don't drink. Really? Wow. That's no fun. <laughs> well, I mean, sometimes I'll have like one, right? <laughs> but the night is young and I've got to pace myself. Thank you again so, so much for being here. Thank you so much for being here. Right? Um, isn't it so great that Julie was able to make it all the way out here for David's party? Yes. When did you make it in town or state? <laughs> this morning. Yeah, I, I had a shift last night and I just, I couldn't get out of it, so. Oh, no way. What do you do? Oh, I'm an ER nurse. How cute. Yeah, thanks. And your dress is like scrub color, so it's like keeping with your brand. I love it. Oh, wow. I didn't even think of that. Grace is in medicine, too, but she's an actual doctor. Krista. Oh, wow. Grace. You are Grace. The Grace. The Grace. Yes. Oh, you look so pretty tonight. Thank you. You know, I, I almost didn't recognize you. Oh. And you know... In all honesty, I just thought it was really, really cute at the dance. How you thought David actually wanted to kiss you? Ouch. Each gal puts on their fakest smile and sighs. Exterior, snow leopard exhibit. A little later, Matt sits on a bench writing an email on his phone. Nick smiles with childlike wonder as he watches the snow leopard eating a raw meat dinner near the glass pane of its exhibit. Nearby, Krista and Grace watch from a distance as Julie chats with other guests. They strategize in hushed tones. What? How? Cracks? Cracks is good. It's time to splinter it open. Great. How? Find an opportunity for her to see you flirting alone with him. Talk to him real close to his ear. Bonus <sighs> points for any physical touching. The more she sees, the better. But also, like, make him fall in love with you, too. Of course. We hear Nick yell nearby. Help! She's choking! Everyone's attention turns to the snow leopard exhibit where Nick is attempting to open the gate to the leopard exhibit where the animal is choking on her meal. Screams cry out everywhere. A nearby zoo employee rushes over, attempts to help Nick get the gate open, but their key card can't access it. Nick begins a harrowing climb, the 15 foot high gate of the enclosure as the employee runs to a nearby kiosk, activates an alarm, and picks up the intercom. Paging Dr. Hockley, enclosure 79, code red, Dr. Hockley. Cut to David running full speed across the zoo, a la Tom Cruise in any movie. The determined look on his face is enough to part the crowd before him as he sprints through. Just as Nick reaches the top of the fence, David arrives and uses his keycard to swing open the gate with excessive force which almost sends Nick flying. 
David rushes in, jumps on the leopard's back, performs a large animal Heimlich maneuver, and dislodges the food. The animal's breathing is heavy and abnormal. The sounds she makes are disturbing as she struggles to regain her breath. David pets her head and pats her back, speaking to her quietly. Atta girl, Snowbell. You're okay. The alarm, You're okay. The alarm finally goes silent and Snowbell's breathing returns to normal. She licks David's face with her giant tongue. David suddenly notices that every party guest is watching in silence. He picks up the chunk of meat that had choked her and holds it up like a trophy. She's okay. The crowd She's all right. Goes wild. Our beloved birthday boy has saved the giant cat. As David soaks in the applause, big time, Julie rushes into the exhibit to hug him. Nick awkwardly climbs back down the fence in front of them. Exterior, snow leopard exhibit continuous. Matt arrives at the fence to help Nick down. I got you. Here, uh, take my hand. Thanks. Krista and Grace join them. My God, are you okay? Grace throws her arms around Nick, checks his face, kisses his cheek. Yeah, I'm good. I, I think I ripped my favorite suit, but... Oh. At least the animal's fine. I'm glad the cat's okay. If I could have everybody's attention. Interior, snow leopard exhibit continuous. David has activated the exhibit presenter's sound system and speaks to guests over the microphone. Julie and Snowbell the leopard flank his sides. I wanted to do something tonight, and I figure now, while everyone's gathered, this is the perfect opportunity. The crowd hushes, growing quiet once again. Well, I, I wanted to thank you all again for making this time to come celebrate with me, with us. If you haven't met her yet tonight, this is my beautiful Julie smattering of applause while she hasn't been in my life very long by our earthly calendar there's no doubt in my soul we've been connected for many lifetimes exterior snow leopard exhibit continuous disbelief transforms julia's face and then krista's and then grace's David takes a knee, a gasp from the crowd. Interior snow leopard exhibit continuous. Baby, I love you. You are my world. And I promise to cherish you for a million more lifetimes to come. Will you marry me? Yes! The crowd erupts again. Julie throws her arms around David, who picks her up in a big, aggressive bear hug. Exterior snow leopard exhibit continuous. Matt, Krista, Julie, and Nick watch as the newly engaged couple celebrate, exit the exhibit, and are met with a sea of guests offering congratulations. Uh, so much for the coup. What? Krista and Grace look intently at Matt with the widest eyes possible. That's the whole reason we're here, right? Matt? Uh, so you could make the guy jealous and, and Grace could win him back? Nope. Nope. That, uh, is that right? Oh, awesome. He didn't know. Is that true? I'm sorry. Yes, it was at first, but... Wow. I, um, oh. It turns and makes his way away through the crowd. Krista and Grace look at each other. Nobody wanted to tell me he wasn't in on it? Exterior, Zoo Boise, parking lot, moments later. Nick walks briskly to his car. Grace runs behind him, shoes in hand to catch up. Nick! And Nick! He's almost to his car. Nick! At his car, he spins around. Nick, I'm sorry. Pl let me explain. Okay, I came back for winter ball hoping, kind of dreaming that I'd find some sort of fairy tale ending up with David. Nick leans against his car. Fairy tale. 
I didn't know he had a girlfriend. And, and when he kissed me at the dance, I, I, I didn't know it wasn't real. I lied to you about that. Nick presses a button, unlocking his car. But I only lied because I was hurt. Krista knew my heart was broken, so she came up with this plan to help me win David back. Can I just stop you right there? Will you please just let me finish? Nick considers. Fine. But under one condition. Once you're finished, you're actually finished. Forever. Because I never want to hear from you again. What? Deal? Okay. It's like our entire relationship. A friendship, friendship. I've been, I could never express it. But that's nobody's fault but mine. I should have been more clear about it. It's probably 100% my fault because it's my fault I'm hurting and I it's my fault I'm betrayed because I never said it. But Grace, I love you. I always have. I love everything about you. I love the way you laugh, the way you cry. I love how you stand by every Julia Roberts movie, no matter what, which is infuriating, but it's you. I love how you've never been sure who you are or what you really want. I love that because that's life, mostly. When you left for school, there was this empty space in my chest. I thought it would fade away with time. It never did. I should have written you or emailed you or reconnected somehow, social media or whatever, but I knew you were out following your dreams and I didn't want to be a distraction. I wanted to watch you soar. And I had this light. At the end of the tunnel, I had it. The winter ball queen always returns for their 20 year. Every year that went by, that light grew brighter. It came closer because every time I climbed those steps where I kissed you, I imagined getting another chance, a chance to do it right this time. I had no idea. That's not your fault. It's not. It's my own dumb, scared heart. I couldn't say it. I couldn't just simply tell you. I tried. I tried by honoring you the best I could. Went all out. The, the stage lights we installed in the gym. I got the marching band for you. How many winter balls do you remember having a marching band play? I couldn't say it. I couldn't say I love you. I tried my I tried my damn best to show you. And to watch Hockley kiss you. Nick, please. I'm not I'm not mad at you. I'm not. I don't blame you at all. All those years I was dreaming. In my head. You were gone but not forever. You had your ticket to the world. I just dreamed that when you came back, it would be to me. But now I, I see I was only ever just a friend to you. A wingman. It was all in my head. That was my fairy tale. And in all honesty, I owe you a million thanks for what you did tonight. I imagine it might help me heal. Knowing you're just actually a horrible person in real life.
Nick turns, gets in his car. Nick, wait! Nick! Nick, please! He drives away. <sighs> Interior, Dawson home, later. Grace returns home, heartbroken, disgusted with herself. More lost than ever. Interior, kitchen, continuous. On her way to her room, she stops in the kitchen for a glass of water. She fills it. Her focus is drawn to the bouquet of white roses on the counter. Exterior, Dawson home, moments later. Grace opens the front door, throws the roses out onto the lawn, slams the door. Crickets chirp in the stillness of the night. Cross dissolve to exterior Dawson home morning. Same camera shot, but night is now morning. In the daylight, the home's new security cameras are more noticeable. Anna, bundled up, exits the house. First, she looks around for the suspicious vehicle. Coast is clear. As she walks out to the driveway for the newspaper, she notices the roses on the front lawn. Interior, Dawson home, hallway, Grace's bedroom door. As Anna approaches Grace's room, she notices that the old, complete Dawson family photo frame has been taken off the wall. Knocks on Grace's door. No answer. Interior, Grace's bedroom. The room is dark until Anna opens the door slightly. With a creak, she, she pokes her head in. Grace is in bed, covered with her sheets, but from the sound of her voice, she clearly wasn't sleeping. Yeah, Mom. You okay? I'm fine. I'm fine. Yeah. Okay, I love you. I love you. Anna closes the door. Exterior, Boise, Idaho, day. A series of shots, the outside world, and the hustle and bustle of Christmas Eve. Interior, Dawson home, hallway, Grace's bedroom door, afternoon. Anna, now dressed for the day, holding a plate of tamales, knocks again. Grace, honey? No answer. Interior, Grace's bedroom. The room is still dark. Anna opens the door slightly with a creak, and she pokes her head in. Grace? Grace, still in bed, still covered with her sheets. Yeah, Mom. It's two in the afternoon. Are you going to spend all of your Christmas Eve in your bed? I don't know. Do you want to talk about it? No. Well, you have to eat something. I'm going to leave some tamales here. Thanks, Mom. She sets the plate on her dresser. I love you, honey. I love you. Anna closes the door. Exterior, Boise, Idaho, dusk. <coughs> Series of shots. As the sun begins to set, the outside world prepares for the final night of Advent, Christmas Eve. Interior, Dawson home, hallway, Grace's bedroom <coughs> door, evening. Anna, now accompanied by Rose, knocks again. Grace? Honey? No answer. Gotta go in there. Interior, Grace's bedroom. The room is still dark. Anna opens the door slightly with a creak. She pokes her head in. Grace? Yeah, Mom. You haven't touched your tamales. I will. Honey, you're gonna get sick. They've been sitting out there for four hours. I'm sorry, Mom. Anna hands the plate to Rose out in the hall and enters Grace's room, shuts the door. She turns on the dim light on her nightstand and sits on the side of the bed. Listen, I don't know what you're going through, but I know that it helps to talk about it. I'm okay. Anna strokes Grace's hair. Baby girl. Mommy's here. After a long day. 
I messed up, Mom. Real bad. Is that David boy? No. Nick. Nick? Nick, your friend from school? Principal Dewitt's boy? Dewitt's boy? Yes. He loves me. He's always loved me. I never saw it. And last night I lied to him and I I used him and I I betrayed him and now he hates me. I'm sure he does not hate you. He said I was a horrible person in real life, so I'm not a horrible person, right? I know you are not a horrible person. You, look, you just made a mistake. Okay. He was the first man who ever loved me, and I broke his heart. First of all, he is not. Emotions get deep. He is not the first man who ever loved you. Okay? Don't you dare say that, honey. Grace finally sits up in bed. As she does, we see she has been holding the Dawson family photo frame. She sets it aside embraces her mother. Oh, no, no, Mom. No, I didn't mean it like that. You know, you know I didn't mean it like that, right? I know. I miss him so much. I've just been laying here thinking, how disappointed would Daddy be in me today? Oh, he wouldn't, baby. He, he wouldn't. He would be so proud of the woman that you've become. And so don't you ever doubt that for a second. Ever. Okay. Okay, your father knew more than anyone that we are all human. That we all make mistakes. He knew the importance of forgiveness. Forgiveness. And before we be we begin to forgive each other, we have to be able to forgive ourselves first. Yeah. And any time that I feel myself hurting, I mean, when it's bad, <laughs> I can hear his voice. This too shall pass. <laughs> he said that all the time. So, honey, I wouldn't worry so much, okay? Don't sweat the small stuff, Anna. Life is full of disappointment. But better days better will days come. come. <sighs> Me too. So, tell me about Nick. He's, he's sweet, understanding, considerate. He remembers all the important things and he always thinks of me first. Would daddy like him? Oh, daddy would love him. <laughs> well, then it sounds like you're going to need to try to get him back. I doubt he would forgive me. Grace? Have you just asked him to? I started to, but I I started to apologize. He didn't let me finish. I, I wanted to tell him I'm sorry. I don't know how I didn't see it. And I love him too. Wait. That's it. What's it? That's it. I, I have to go. It was part of the deal. We have to go. I have to find him. And I drive. Interior, Aunt Rose's van, moments later. Aunt Rose speeds recklessly through town. In the passenger seat, Grace navigates with her phone. Anna holds on for dear life in the back. Sound trumpets. Let our bloody colors wave and either victory or else a grave. Okay, Aunt Rose, please. Oh, sorry, I'm just excited. <laughs> Exterior, the Witt family home. Minutes later, establishing shot of the DeWitt family home, 
Rose's van pulls to a stop. Grace jumps out. Exterior, DeWitt family home. Front door. Rose knocks, rings the bell. After a few moments, Nick's father, Mr. DeWitt, answers the door. Hi, Mr. DeWitt. Mr. DeWitt puts his glasses on. Uh, hi, miss. Can I help you? I'm, I'm Grace Dawson, an old friend of Nick's. Uh, yes, I remember. Grace. How are you, dear? Good, thank you. Is Nick here? Oh, I'm sorry, dear. No, he, he manages the uh, Christmas Eve dinner for the uh, unsheltered each year. Oh, that's right. Thank you. Um, they still do that? At the high school. In the gymnasium. Thank you. Merry Christmas, Mr. Duet. Merry Christmas. Interior, Aunt Rose's van, moments later. Back in the van, Aunt Rose speeds through town, laughing maniacally. <laughs> I swear, if you don't stop doing that. Ah, oh, stop harshing my vibe, crone. <laughs> Exterior, Boise High School, gymnasium, a little later. Dinner guests and volunteers make their way out of the gym. Grace is seated on the steps, waiting, watching for Nick. Not noticing her, Nick escorts the final volunteers, the assistant principal, and a student out of the gym. He turns to lock up the doors. Thank you again for your help. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Nick. Bye, Mr. DeWitt. See you next year. Next year. He finishes locking up, turns. Grace stands. They lock eyes. Nick turns, walks away toward the main campus. Grace follows him. I told you I do not want to hear from you again. You didn't let me finish. That was part of the deal. You don't have to hear from me again if you really don't want to hear from me again, but you have to let me finish. Nick continues to walk. As they enter the quad, exterior, Boise High School, quad, continuous. They continue to walk toward the main school building. I got so caught up in this 20-year-old idea of what I wanted. My happy ending, the king and queen riding off into the sunset. I was completely blinded to what was real. The nonfiction story that was laid out perfectly in front of me. Will you please just stop? He doesn't. He keeps walking, so she keeps following. Exterior, Boise High School, main building, up the steps of the main building. I'm sorry, I have no justifiable excuse for how I treated you other than my head was in the clouds. I was lost, disconnected. It took a mistake, one I'm very sorry for, to help me turn the page and see. At the top of the stairs, Nick unlocks the school doors. Interior, Boise High School, main building. Grace follows Nick inside as he continues to his office. I don't want that fairy tale. I want to be with someone who knows I'm not perfect. Someone who knows I stand by every Julia Roberts movie no matter what, which is infuriating because it's me. She follows him into the staircase. They climb. Someone who loves how I've never been sure who I am or what I want because that's life. They reach the top of the stairs, enter Nick's office hallway. That person is not a dream. He's real. He's you. Nick, please. Just stop. Please. I'm sorry. They finally reach Nick's office. Nick enters, closes the door. Grace stays back <sighs> in the hall. The office walls and doors are thin half-paned with frosted glass that provides a little bit of privacy, but you can still see silhouettes through them. She speaks to him through the door. Intercut scene, Nick's office and the hallway. I don't blame you for thinking I was a horrible person in real life. But please, you have to know I love you too. And I want to be with you. Hearing these words, he sits on the couch in his office. He's torn, still heartbroken. Nick, give me another chance. Please. He sits in silence. Okay. I'll wait. She sits on the floor. 
waiting outside his office door. He doesn't move, still conflicted. Montage, time passing. A short series of dissolves show the passing of time. End of montage. As the montage ends, Nick is asleep on the office couch. Grace slowly stands one last time to the door. I love you. It's true. She exits. Exterior, Boise High School, main building. Grace descends the stairs, defeated. It begins to snow. Halfway down the steps, she stops, looks up at the snow, and then at Nick's office window, just above the main doors. An idea. Her face changes from defeated to determined. She takes out her phone, dials. Mr. Conse, Jim, I'm sorry, it's Grace Dawson. I apologize for calling so late on Christmas Eve, but I have the biggest favor ever to ask you. Fade to black. Fade in. Interior, Boise High School. Nick's office, later. Nick sleeps, curled up in his suit on the office couch. As a light snow continues to fall outside his office window, a sound creeps through the silent night. An electric keyboard plays some chords and a synth pattern. Nick stirs, looks around. The melody continues outside. Finally, he recognizes the pattern. Disbelief wipes across his face. He hears Grace's voice singing over a PA out front. He stands, looks out the window. Exterior, Boise High School, continuous. Grace plays an electric keyboard, which is set up with a microphone and speakers on the sidewalk in front of the school. He opens his office window as she finishes the introduction. <laughs> Come on, what are you doing? She continues into the song. So true, funny how it seems. Always on time, but never in line for dreams. Grace! <laughs> She holds up a don't interrupt me finger and continues to play. This is the sound. On cue with the big chord and the lyrics sound, the street fills with nearby vehicle headlights illuminating the marching band, which practically knocks Nick over with their epic wall of sound. Of my soul, this is the sound. Nick's eyes fill with tears of joy. Oh my God, Grace! And Grace stands up from the keyboard, takes the microphone off the stand. The marching band continues to back her up as she sings to Nick, slowly climbing the stairs. I bought a ticket to the world. More headlights turn on, illuminating the church choir. Flanking the marching band, the chorus of vocals joins Grace. Among the singers, of course, her mother, Anna, and Aunt Rose. But now I've come back again. Why do I find it hard to write the next line? Oh, I want the truth to be said. That seals it. Nick disappears from his office window. Grace watches the front doors anxiously as the band and choir continue the song. I know this much is true. The front doors open. Nick exits. He and Grace meet halfway up the stairs. I'm sorry. Me too. I love you. I smile. He said it. I love you. They kiss. On the lips this time. There, on the steps of the high school. Band playing, snow falling, choir singing. It's like a real life, non-fiction Christmas fairy tale. Fade to black. Fade in. Exterior, Boise High School, parking lot, later. Mr. Katsay loads sound equipment into his car. Anna approaches. Jim. Mr. Katsay turns. Anna, uh, hello. I, I just want to thank you for putting all this together for my Gracie on a moment's notice on Christmas Eve. It, it was my pleasure. Uh, you, me, 
Your family means a lot to me. Thanks, uh, Anna, I, I have to tell you something. I'm embarrassed. I, I, and there's no way to say it without sounding like a stalker. Anna notices his car, a dark sedan with tinted windows. Those mornings, I'd be driving by and I just wanted to say hello, to visit, um, j just to say good morning and, and, and wish you a good day or, or just leave flowers or pastries on your doorstep. He opens the passenger door to reveal several bouquets of flowers, all in varied stages of wilting. I never found the courage. I couldn't even bring myself to roll down the window and say hello when you were there. I, I only had the best intentions. I, I apologize if I scared you. Anna smiles, flattered. She holds out a hand. He takes it. She hugs him. Exterior, Boise, Idaho, Christmas morning. Series of shots. Christmas morning in beautiful Boise. Interior, Dawson home, Christmas morning. Series of shots. The Dawson home all set up for Christmas. Rose and Anna prepare the feast in the kitchen. Interior, Grace's room. Grace, dressed in her Christmas morning pajamas, curls her hallmark hair for the day. Her phone rings on the counter. A local number she doesn't recognize. She answers on speakerphone. Hello? Oh! Oh, you answered! Hi, is this Grace? Speaking. I'm so sorry to bother you Christmas morning. Honestly, I was just planning on leaving a voicemail. It's okay. My name is Jovi Hockley. I'm David's sister on the board at St. Bernard, uh, St. Luke's. Grace stares into the mirror, listening in joyful disbelief. David gave me your info and your resume just this morning at breakfast. He did? It's very impressive. I would love to set up a meeting with you. Maybe the first week of January? She smiles. Y yes, I'd like that. Very much. Hugh, an upbeat rendition of I'll Be Home for Christmas. Interior, Dawson Home, Dining Room, Brunch. A record player spins the tune as the buffet table is set. As promised, it's an epic Christmas morning Idahoan potato platter filled with sweet potato pancakes, corned beef hash browns, O'Brien skillet, bacon tater tot baked at ham and potato frittata, and on and on and on. The Dawson home is filled with Christmas music, love and laughter again for the first time in years as loved ones gather. Krista, Mark, Emily, Aunt Rose, Mr. Katze, Anna, Grace, and Nick. The chorus approaches the end. I love you. I'll be home for Christmas. Sing with me, nice and loud. If only in my dreams. End of film. That was so much fun. Everybody at home, please. Let's hear for our incredible cast. And cast, if you're still around, turn on your cameras for a, a, a curtain call. Let's hear it for Jamie Carganilla, Amanda Benjamin, Cassie Simone, Darren Ingram, Frank Romeo, our narrator, who had so much work tonight, Hunter Ackerman, Jamie Brucker, Rebecca Saab. Thank you all so oh, um and, and Everly Carganilla. Carganilla. She's not in the Zoom, so <laughs> <laughs>